What is the biggest nonsense you've ever been told? What would the child you were think of the adult you've become? What have you managed to avoid your whole life? Dating. I single-handedly avoided every date possible by being myself. Hey, man, come on, come on. Breaking a bone. Jury duty. Death. Props to you. Marriage. Getting COVID, apparently. Multiple people I've been around have tested positive multiple times. Every test I've had has been negative. Rabies. So far, anyway. On your worst days, what's something a random stranger could do to brighten your day? I think it's pretty adorable when some random baby just gives me a wave out of nowhere. It's actually really cute when they do that. I was walking towards the store from the parking lot when I saw a man walking from the store to his car with a couple dozen roses. I said, oh, how gorgeous. Someone's so lucky. He smiled, said thank you, and kept walking. I made it to the front doors of the store when I felt a tap on my shoulder and he was there, holding out a rose. He was grinning so wide and said, have a wonderful day. I couldn't stop smiling as I went grocery shopping with a flower in my hand. Made me feel so special. Was having a complicated morning. Body image issues. Homeless dude outside the store stops me and says, can I ask you something? Do you feel as good as you look? It didn't come off as gross or weird, but a genuine compliment. I told him I definitely feel older than I am. Chatted with him for a second, bought him some food while I was inside. I don't care what his motives may have been. He was kind and respectful and I needed to hear that. I love seeing passionate people being passionate about their passion. It cheers me up vicariously and there's no me in the equation, which is helpful because trying to cheer me up usually backfires on people. A compliment. In my 19 years of being alive, the only compliments I've gotten were from my grandma calling me a handsome young man. These compliments from grandma are the only things fueling me these days. I will just be having a bad day, then I remember her saying I'm a handsome young man when I was 8 years old and I cheer up a bit. If someone compliments me in public, it would likely be something I'll remember for life. I love, love, love to see someone full on rocking out in their car. I will always roll down my window because I really want to know what they're listening to. Bonus points if it's something unexpected, like time I caught a young millennial dude blasting and singing every word to double vision. Rock on, my guy. Keep on rocking in the free world. A random compliment. I'm a guy and getting a compliment is very rare. Give me a cupcake with sprinkles. Uh, sprinkles are overrated. Cupcakes are good. Give me a hug and tell me everything's okay. You know what, random stranger? I will. Actually wave when I let them into my lane. If a random stranger gave me a f ton of money, that would definitely work, even on my best day. Hey, me and this guy got a lot in common. Anyone want to give me a bunch of money? That'd be great. Who is the black sheep of your family? Probably my dad's cousin, who went to prison for murdering his lover's husband. My dad. He's the only one of six siblings who wasn't a huge f up. And yet, before my grandma died, she stated that he was her biggest disappointment. He's estranged from his surviving siblings, not by his choice. It honestly blows my mind. My immediate family are the black sheep of the entire family. My great uncle who stole my great grandfather's identity, stole a couple million dollars and ran off. No one even knew he was alive until my great grandfather's funeral in 2009. No one has seen him since. A former nun, my great aunt, left the religious life and got married. She called herself the black sheep of the family because her habit was black. Oh boy. Woo! Definitely me. You don't leave the Mormon church and not instantly and forever gain that title. My dad's older brother, the failed musician and former junkie. He's like that Steve Buscemi what's up fellow kids character but without the irony uh actually it's how do you do fellow kids <laughs> 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 my adopted brother. He is black. Um, <laughs> I don't know why that caught me off guard. Oh, that's so funny. Is he also a sheep? If you could choose your nationality, which one would it be? I'd go with Norwegian, but I'm pretty happy with being Canadian. Icelandic for sure. Maybe Finnish. Definitely one of those countries around there where it doesn't seem like the government is making bets on you if you'll starve or freeze to death first. You couldn't pay me to be Finnish. Norwegian, Swedish, and Danish. Swiss or Canadian too. I'm telling you right now, I would not want to be Canadian. Swiss. Nah, I'll stay, I'll stay. Decent weather, paid holidays, and super cold beer. Free healthcare, and if I follow my ass hard enough, I can always get in with the Centrelink queue, and the government will fix me up 700 out of Fortnite plus rent assistance if needed. This dude just said Fortnite. New Zealand. Robloxian from Meep City District. All right. Nerd. Scottish. Who's a beloved historical figure who's actually a villain? Thomas Edison. Who isn't these days? That's a shorter list. By all accounts, Andrew Jackson was a real SOB, and yet he's on the bill. Yeah, I think we all know Andrew Jackson's a head, you know. I, I'm pretty sure learning about the Trail of Tears was, was enough to convince me. John Wifebeater Lennon. Imagine all the people hitting wives in peace. Yeah, John Lennon. I hate that guy. Depends on your perspective. People in the U.S. like to talk about how much of a bad Teddy Roosevelt was. I'm willing to bet people in the Philippines have a different opinion of the guy. Anybody whose face is on money is likely to have been the villain in somebody's story. Winston Churchill. Barack Obama. The man directly ordered the death of children 
and the destruction of hospitals, but people trip over themselves to suck him off. What genuinely changed your life? Becoming physically disabled. Two things that stand out are paralysis and completing my undergraduate degree, which has led me to be able to go forward with further education. A third thing might be wheelchair rugby. I've only been involved with it for a short time, but it's radically changed how I view being a quadriplegic. Reading books. Selling my gaming setup. A bidet. Nothing like the confidence of a clean booty. Being my own best friend and learning to stand up for myself. Learning not to sweat the small stuff in life. The less stress you have, let get to you, the better off you'll be. What music album is a true masterpiece from start to finish? Stevie Wonder's Inner Visions. Even his other great 70s run albums had a track or two that was only okay. Not that one. It's all brilliant. Vivaldi's Four Seasons. Graceland. Paul Simon. Mezzanine 1998 by Massive Attack. Rumors. Gorillas Demon Days. Nevermind. Nirvana. The Miseducation of Lauryn Hill. Blonde. Frank Ocean. What previously normal thing is now a luxury? Retirement strategy built into your job. Privacy. Eight hours of sleep. At least for me. I'd like to add I'm not a parent. I'm just f***ing miserable. Hey, me too, buddy. We've all been there. I got four hours of sleep last night. Uninterrupted videos. In the UK, heating our homes for the winter. Energy prices have become unaffordable. A single income household that owns a home, a car, and can go on yearly family vacations. Owning a home. That's my dream, man. Ah, oh, God. If I ever buy a home, I'll know I made it, you know? Ads free YouTube. Ad blockers are still a thing, though. For now, looking at you, Chromium. Water. Oops, sorry. Thought it was 2024. Worryingly correct. What drink is a 10 out of 10? I need you to hear me out, guys. Lime Cucumber Gatorade. The one of the best drinks I've ever had. Cold water at 2.34 a.m. with a dry <laughs> throat. Water. Specifically 2 a.m. water. Water out of one of those paper cones. Oh, yes. From, like, any office place. So good. A single plum floating in perfume served in a man's hat. Number eight. <laughs> a well-made margarita. Chocolate milk. Gatorade hits different when you've been outside in hot temps all day. Ginger ale poured in a glass with ice. Orange crush once every five years. I've never had orange crush. Iced tea. Iced tea with a little fruit like raspberry or lemon or blackberry. Oh, so good. Coffee. Not a lot of love for the bean juice in this thread, but I'm with you, my friend. Deserved. Coffee doesn't deserve any love. Water from the hose after playing outside in the heat. Honestly, that probably boosted my immune system tenfold as a kid. <laughs> the one you get after being 30 for a while. How long do I need to be 30? You gotta suck at spelling. Hey, lock the Kong spelling police. What question sounds dumb, but is actually hard to answer? In his autobiography, Richard Feynman said that his PhD oral exam was one question long. Why is the sky blue? And before you reply with the easy textbook answer about the composition of the atmosphere, scattering different frequencies of light at different angles, be prepared for the follow-up question. Why? And then why again? He said that you don't have to go more than a couple of layers deep before you're into the less well understood and far weirder reaches of quantum physics. F***ing magnets. How do they work? Why don't you have a girlfriend? Um, it's because I'm uh, uh, oh man. Do we all see colors the same way? Like, is my green your green, or does your green actually look like my blue? What question sounds dumb, but is actually hard to answer? <laughs> I see what you did there. Does a straw have one hole or two? None, it's just a curved wall. It's it's one hole. It's one continuous hole. How did they know what exact time it was when putting the time on a clock? Eh, they probably just Googled it. Where did you come from, Cotton Eye Joe? Where did he come from? Does anyone know the answer? What's something you always forget to do? Ask people back. I always forget that when people ask me something, they want me to ask them back. I always forget to bring those grocery totes in with me. Instead, I end up paying for paper bags. Close the cabinet when I get something out of it. You are the worst of the worst. It's you gotta remember to close the freaking cabinet. Check the mail. It's 99% spam, 1% jury duty. Text people back. Sometimes I'm too busy at work to respond to texts. I read them and mean to respond later, but then I forget. <coughs> Watering the plants. They are dying and it's my fault. Please don't have kids. Text people back. I always end up replying to them in my mind. They can't read your mind, brother. Drink water to complete the daily minimum intake. I forgot what I was going to comment. What was better a hundred years ago than it is now? Being able to see the stars. Biodiversity. Especially the biodiversity and density of insects. The architecture. Bananas. It's true. Bananas nowadays are not so good. Privacy. Probably the water quality of major rivers and oceans. Quality of a lot of things. Things are mass produced now and made with cheap materials. The ozone layer. The quality of furniture and other home appliances. They were actually built to last. Global population. Social skills. Thank you, Monsieur Fat. Tom Hanks recently said that he thinks that four of his movies were pretty good. Which four do you think he's referring to? Philadelphia, Forrest Gump, Green Mile, Saving Private Ryan. Saving Private Ryan's gotta be one of them. Philadelphia, Forrest Gump, Saving Private Ryan, Castaway. I sense a pattern here, guys. Toy Story, Toy Story 2, Toy Story 3, Toy Story 4. How is no one including Apollo 13? The Burbs, The Terminal, Toy Story 2, and The Polar Express. Man, I love Tom Hanks. So many fantastic movies. The B-Movie, F it. I upvoted you. I wish I could give you an award, but I'm cheap and don't want to spend money. Sorry. What did Tom Hanks play in B-Movie? Am I missing a joke here?
here? I don't know. What food combo is a must try? Hot sauce and mac and cheese. French fries with ice cream. Hash brown potatoes with pure maple syrup. Sweet and salty. Perfection. French onion dip on a burger. This probably is good. I love French onion dip. Hot popcorn and M&Ms. Specifically, peanut M&Ms. Feta cheese and watermelon. I know it sounds crazy, the flavors and textures, but when combined, it's euphoric in your mouth. I'm gonna have to give that a try. Sriracha and eggs. This is a combo for life. Every time I make a sandwich, an egg sandwich, I'm putting sriracha on that B. Peanut butter sandwich dipped in tomato soup. Three to five days of the week of school poverty meals. I ate that over the dog <laughs> pizza they made us. Fried egg and chili oil. Pickles and potato chips. What is the worst movie scene in history? I did not hit her. I did not. Oh, hi, Mark. The basketball scene in Catwoman. Pool sex scene in Showgirls. It's so bad, it's funny, though. American Sniper fake baby scene is so bad. Like, what was their thinking on that one? Not a movie, but all the scenes where Rachel and Joey were a couple on Friends. Too bad you will die. Curb Stomp. American History X. The sound of his teeth scraping the curb sends shivers up my spine every time. I don't even want to know. That sounds horrifying. So many from Dark Knight Rises. The sequence of the attack on the stock market. Then the next day headline is Bruce Wayne's fortune is gone. In between, the chase from the exchange is at night. Then the same next day. Bruce is getting his Lambo repoed. Just know to all of it. They didn't raid his checking account. Even if they did and payment wasn't made, they wouldn't have gotten a repo order that fast. And it didn't make sense for someone like him to finance a car in the first place. Especially since he had enough resources after all that happened to teleport back to Gotham in secret after escaping the prison. Skylar White singing happy birthday. My name is Skylar White, yo. Husband of Walter White, yo. What song screams the 80s? Girls Just Wanna Have Fun by Cyndi Lauper. Everybody wants to rule the world. Welcome to your life. Take on me. Take me on. Jump by Van Halen. Don't you forget about me. Don't you want me. I just died in your arms tonight. Video killed the radio star. Material Girl by Madonna. Guys, there's too many 80s hits. At that point, shouldn't we like, if it, there, there's no way every song from the 80s can be a hit. You know, like, they're just all <clears throat> there. What are you currently hoarding? As someone who orders food a lot, plastic bags, those microwavable takeout containers, unused sauce packs, they're all stuffed in my sink cabinet. Anxiety. Canned tomatoes. Dude's about to make a bunch of sauce. Late 80s, early 2000s computer, audio, and radio equipment. It started out with just an old stereo I obtained from a family member as a kid, like 20-ish years ago, and developed into a massive assortment of mostly just various cables and busted PA sets. Regrets. No regrets, dude. Come on. Books. I have a little over a thousand. They are slowly spilling into every room in my apartment. Dreams and desires. Yu-Gi-Oh cards. Steam games I'll never play. Pardon the redundancy. Pretty stationary and notebooks. Can't bring myself to use them. That's what I'm saying, man. I am hoarding Pokemon plushies. I have them all behind me in a, in a big shelf I got from Ikea. There's like, at, there's probably like almost 200 of them. Probably. Who is your favorite YouTuber? My favorite YouTuber is AskMK. You guys should subscribe to them. Really cool. Channel 5 with Andrew Callaghan. Depends on what I'm in the mood for, but I really like Penguin Zio. The consistency of his uploads give me something to look forward to. I like a channel called Institute of Human Anatomy. It just talks about human anatomy and science, but they use and dissect real bodies. It's great. Oversimplified. Let's game it out. His level of game fuckery and fantastic editing skills are just great. Abroad in Japan. Overly sarcastic productions. They focus on literature and history, though I tend to watch more of red stuff than blues. Guys, I don't know who any of those people are except Moist Critical. <laughs> I don't know any of the other guys. <laughs> Adam Levine's bad flirting has become a meme, but what does good flirting look like to you? Holy f***. Holy f***. f that body of yours is absurd. Shut up, Adam Levine. Stupid. Being respectful and not hitting on me when you have a wife, first of all. Maybe talking about common interest and laughing together a lot and genuine compliments? We don't need weird pickup lines or anything that's a trick. I think you look really pretty today. Or something like that, I guess. I, I don't know. I never managed to flirt successfully in my life. Guys, I used to be real good at flirting when I was in school, but nowadays, oh man. I'm too even, I'm scared to even talk to women. For real, for real. I've really been so bad at recognizing when someone is flirting with me. My friends have to point it out later on. Asking Reddit for good flirting advice. That's a bold strategy, Cotton. Let's see how it plays out. You know that smell gas has? They put that in. Guys, am I stupid? I don't get this. Did Michelangelo make you? Because you're a piece of art. Damn, here's my number. Are you asking Redditors for their take on good flirting? Come on, son. That's what I'm saying. I wouldn't trust Redditors with anything. It's like an unspoken inside joke that only the two of you get. That you know that they know that you know you both want to f or something. What are you really bad at? Explaining things. I'm a super fast learner when it's hands on, but I can't learn from just book instruction. Makes it hard for me to explain things I understand to others because I don't really know how I understand it. I just do. Not responding to people immediately after they message me when I've decided I'm not going to be at their beck and call. They let me sit for hours and respond with 
two words and think, why do I keep making an effort? The bo but the moment they reach out, I go all Dory on it. Birthday messages. Math. I have dyscalculia. Drawing. Writing comments. Small talk. Yeah, I'm not good at small talk either. I'll be like, hey, so you like Pokemon? And they'll be like, uh, isn't that like for kids? And I'll be like, yeah, you're right, it is. Ah! And, then, and, then, and then it's awkward. Rigting and spelling. If Kirby inhaled you, what power would he get? Getting no bitches. R slash suicide by words. This thread looks more like if Kirby inhaled you, what weakness would he gain? It's much your fat again. He'd immediately throw me up. Depression. Borderline personality disorder. A humongous c <laughs> The insatiable thirst to kick anyone and everyone in the nuts. Dick and balls havers. Have any of you guys ever been kicked in the nuts so hard that you're on the ground in a ball throwing up and crying? Have, have you guys experienced that too? Because I totally have. What actor or actress would you sleep with? No questions asked. Tom Hardy. Rachel Wise. Or if I have access to a time machine that can take me back to 1987, Patrick Swayze. Natalie Portman or Alexandra Daddario. Bradley Cooper. I agree and I'm a straight man. My brother in Christ, no you are not. You are not a straight man. Margot Robbie. Jessica Alba. Uncle Ben from Spider-Man? With great power comes great bone ability. Make sure to touch his Peter. No! Scarlett Johansson. Colin Farrell. Jason Momoa or Keanu Reeves. What's your go-to chip flavor? Sour cream and onion. Honey barbecue flavor twists. Oh, mwah, so good. Salt and vinegar. Yeah, I'm that guy. Also on a side note, chip and PA are way better than anywhere in the US. If you're ever in PA, try some of our chips like Oots, Middlesworth, Voodoo. The secret to why they're so much better is because they are fried in lard instead of oil. Cheese. Most brands have different kinds or names, but give me the cheddar, Pringles, sour cream and cheddar, Ruffles, etc. Jalapeno chips. However, I've had some bad jalapeno flavored chips. Gotta get the right ones. This Vicky's is probably my favorite. Paprika. Plain? Salt? If a killer tells you to sacrifice one part of your body to let you go, which one first comes to your mind? Appendix. Pinky toe. My belly fat. It's a sacrifice I'm willing to make. Me too, brother. A piece of hair. My d I can afford to lose 1.5 inches of myself. Oh, man. Poor guy. A hangnail. It's technically part of my body. The killer is a dumb for not clarifying himself. The little skin tag in my armpit. A toenail. I need to cut them talons off anyway. My boobs. I don't want them. What would the child you were think of the adult you've become? He'd be so happy for me that I have a YouTube job. <laughs> I've been wanting to be a YouTuber since I was 11 or something. So it's it's nice. What the fuck? So, so disappointed. <coughs> she would think I'm a soulless harlot who is going to burn in hell. Extremely sad and disappointed. Not too shabby. I grew up in Indiana during the 80s. And when I graduated eighth grade, we had to write a blurb about who we would be in the year 2000. It said I'd be a pharmacist living in Arizona. From 2001 on, I've been exactly that. So I've met my childhood self expectations. They would lose their <coughs> in a good way. Probably a combination of amazement and bitter disappointment. Kid me would be devastated devastated to learn we're still fat in our 30s, for one. Hey, what's up, me, like, four years later? Shocked by my confidence, tattoo, and beard. What is the biggest nonsense you've ever been told? You have to forgive <laughs> people and let them continue to be <laughs> because they're family. Give everyone a chance. What a stupid piece of bullshit. <laughs> I will never give everyone a chance. It accomplishes nothing. Americans don't have accents. Like I said last video, this one was me for real, for real. Uh, not anymore, though, because I'm educated and not a stupid idiot. Money can't buy happiness. I'm just saying, if I had money to buy a house, us, I'd be happy. There are no stupid questions. That animals don't have feelings. There's an invisible man living in the sky. What is your irrational fear? People remembering cringe things I did in the past. Buddy, you speak in my language. Getting arrested or going to jail even though I never break the law. But someone's gonna shoot me in the back of the head in public. I'm weirdly okay if it's in the front. At least I'll know what happened. Ceiling fans. I've been watching TV on a small TV VCR. I turned it off and in the reflection I saw my ceiling fan hanging by the wires. I jumped off the bed and looked back to see the ceiling fan fall. It landed where I was laying. I was 8. X squared equals 2. X equals 1.414213562424. Never threw a punch in my life. I'm afraid the one time I do, I'll connect with the guy and he'll just spin headfirst onto the curb and just die. My life changed in an instant because I couldn't control myself. Finding myself in a Groundhog Day style time loop. Being buried alive in a box. Clowns. They are terrifying. You know, I used to be afraid of Muppets back when I was a kid. I'm pretty sure that's an irrational fear. Plants. Mostly because of their shapes. Dude does not go outside. Side. What's a better term for billionaire? Poverty challenged. Kilo millionaire. William air. Temporarily embarrassed trillionaires. A future pinata. Rich boy. Person with a billion dollars. A leech. Now we're speaking my language again. Parasite. Even better. What is the worst baby name you've ever heard? X8-12. Upcoming Elon Musk stands. North, Saint, Sir, True, Dream, etc. Trisha Paytas named her newborn daughter Malibu Barbie. ABCD pronounced absidy. Ugh, gross. Oh, A, B, C, D, E, pronounced
Ghost, Absidy, Chlamydia, Ain't No Way, Amy, Dia, Fixed It, Rainbow, I mean, it's cute and unique, but Glasgow or Kebab, Brittany, it's Brittany, bitch. What movie do you hate that everyone says is amazing? I don't really like Polar Express because the animation is terrible and it seems very overrated. I also didn't really grow up watching it, so I don't have any nostalgia associated with it, but also wouldn't say I hate it. It's just not a good movie. <laughs> you. <laughs> Polar Express is like one of the best Christmas movies. The music is good. The animation is flawless. Well, I wouldn't say flawless. The animation is very good. And the story is awesome. What are you talking about? Brokeback Mountain. Tedious melodrama. Only redeeming quality is that it lost the Oscar to Crash, which is at least watchable trash. Avatar sucked so hard, but everyone seems to like Blue Pocahontas. Iron Man 3 is horrible. Main villain looks like a discounted Tom Cruise. Once again, I disagree. Iron Man 3 is the best of the three Iron Man movies. Also, a great Christmas movie. And it's I don't understand how people don't like like I understand that people don't like it because aim was not what we were hoping for but the story itself is so good Ugh, it's I don't know fast and the furious any Ryan Reynolds movie sorry just like same persona every movie gone with the wind unbearable in every state sober high and drunk la la land yuck I don't care what reddit says outside of its visuals in the scene where Matthew McConaughey watches the tapes interstellar was terrible Harry Potter any of them American Beauty sanctimonious moralizing crap and Kanto dumbest movie ever Ever. School of Rock. What is a random line from a movie that fans will instantly know? Do you understand the words that are coming out of my mouth? Put that thing back where it came from or so help me. Merry Christmas, you filthy animal. She doesn't get eaten by the eels at this time. Hey, you guys. You shall not pass. Oh, captain, my captain. I'll be back. Bend and snap. Nobody puts baby in a corner. Do you prefer summer or winter? Why? Winter? Because I hate being hot. I like being cold. Easy as that. My favorite season is usually whichever one is coming up next. Winter, because heat is literally the worst in every single way imaginable. During summer, I can't sleep. I sweat all the time and just generally feel lethargic all day and all night. Autumn is my favorite season because it means that summer is over and winter is just bliss between two equally great seasons, fall and spring. Neither, because I'm British, I feel the need to complain about the weather regardless. Summer, because I hate cold weather. Winter, only if it's nuclear. All right, weirdo. <laughs> Weird man. Summer, I hate being cold. There aren't enough clothes to keep me warm in the winter and I hate wearing bulky clothes. Summer, I I hate winter driving. Summer. I love warm weather. What is your preferred way to sleep? Holding the wife in a leg lock because she's a sleep kicker. I don't require sleep. I can function for 120 years off of my existing power cell. I honestly sleep perfectly still on my back, with my hands somewhat folded on my stomach. Before you get jealous that I actually can sleep in the way you're supposed to, note that I snore like a jet engine, and anyone who's ever slept in the same room as me resents me beyond belief. I feel that, man. I snore real bad. It's like the TikTok sound. It's like, ah, ah. <laughs> Warm and snug in a cold room. Rolled over to the left, spooning with the homie. Hanging upside down. All right, Dracula. Nude, usually with my eyes closed. With my eyes shut. What are the disadvantages of being good looking? If you're a guy, everyone equally expects you to have good looking, well endowed penis. Dying in gasoline fights. What? <laughs> what? I when you are an introvert and doesn't want to be put on the spotlight, but you're always on spotlight. Putting on weight destroys your social life and you notice you were liked only because of your appearance. Unwanted attention. Draw a lot of attention from from annoying people. People assume you are healthy. People use you. Gotta be careful around mirrors or else you always be late. That's why I'm on time to every single function. Work, dates. <laughs> I don't go on dates. That's such a joke. <clears throat> What's your favorite movie soundtrack? Guardians of the Galaxy, Blade Runner, Lord of the Rings, and Gladiator. This guy gets to pick two. Oh, brother, where art thou? Pulp Fiction, Interstellar, Singles, and Cruella, Baby Driver, How to Train Your Dragon, Moulin Rouge, Spider-Man 2, Harry Potter. Okay, sure. <laughs> Whatever. Your username gets summoned as a demon. What is the ritual like? Uh, you just say Mason until the demon shows up. You must bring five people whose days you have made better, who will each sit at a point on the Pentagram. Then you will have to tell me how you want me to fix up your month. Nice. People doing kinky stuff with each other. People peeing in the pool. You have to hit a virgin with a block of cheese. It doesn't matter what type of cheese, but more expensive it is, better the results. Go skydiving with a koala, a kangaroo, a dingo, and a platypus while playing down under on a didgeridoo. Say my name three times fast. Satan, Satan, Satan. Did it work? Nope. Gather round and breathe deep. Prize winning fart. Stabbing a sword through someone and invoking a demon lord and binding it to the sword. A giant musical fart. Emo kid sitting alone alone crying in the corner of a room, throwing a bunch of stuff into some things. What was the first movie that you remember watching in a theater? Ninja Turtles 2, The Secret of the Ooze, Jurassic Park, scared the hell out of me, An American Tale, The Empire Strikes Back, Batman in 1989, I was five, it was awesome. After that, I remember seeing Ghost, Star Wars, 1977, 
Mustang Drive-In Theater, The Rugrats Movie with the Scratch and Sniff Cards from Burger King, Toy Story, The Land Before Time, The Lion King. Frozen is the first one that I remembered, but I'm pretty sure there have been before. Now I feel old. Sorry. It's not your fault. It's not your fault, Nemo on Land. What hobby is often frowned down upon? I don't know about you, but serial killing is a rather frowned down upon hobby. A lot of nerdy and traditionally male hobbies have been used as punching bags over the years, like model train building, D&D, and figure painting. Since when is model train building a, a male hobby? Is that a thing? Are only men allowed to like trains? Video games. Nah, not anymore. In the late 90s and early 2000s, it was pretty frowned upon. Nowadays, young kids aren't cool if they don't play Fortnite. I love Fortnite. Zero build. Put me on zero build. Oh, mwah, I'm good for the day. Hunting and shooting. Yeah, if you're not hunting to survive and you're hunting for sport, I think you're kind of weird and uh, you should be frowned upon. Traditionally female skills like handcraft, sewing, knitting, crochet, soap making, gardening, you get called a grandmother by people who barely know how any of these hobbies or skills work. But beware if any of them needs something you could make them. Collecting fingernails. Yeah, because that's weird. It should be frowned upon. Collecting belly button lint. Drawing adult content. It's the most in-demand product for artists by a gigantic measure, but people still look down upon the artists. Autograph hunting. If you're an adult, competing amongst other fans to get a celebrity or athlete's attention for them to sign a photo, cap, jersey, etc. You have just graduated from Serial Killer University. What's your yearbook quote? I went to school to get ahead. I ended up with several. Word. 39 buried. Zero found. To the ones that got away. I'll see you later. Climbing my way through life, one body at a time. Some people in this world are evil and need God. All I do is set the appointment. That's actually a uh, pretty cool quote. Not to side with the serial killers here. It took a lot of blood, sweat, and tears to get to this point. What gift for yourself are you currently saving up for? What am I saving up for? I don't know. A double wide on like five acres of land. Need a new laptop? Gonna save and get a new 14 inch MacBook Pro when the new models are released. The remaining parts for my PC build. My poor little graphics card is just about eight years old and is being a trooper. Currently just need a CPU and a motherboard. Gas to keep my place warm in the winter. A mattress. I want a non-budget one for once. A bag of Sour Patch Kids. Like 3k to go on vacation next year, though not entirely sure where yet. Thinking about maybe London or somewhere in Ireland. You would willingly want to go to Britain? <clears throat> Disgusting. A saxophone. A Disneyland trip. What song screams the 2000s? Girlfriend by Avril Lavigne. Toxic by Britney Spears. Somebody once told me the world is gonna roll me. Hey Ya by Outkast. Into Club. In Too Deep by Sum 41. Holla Back Girl. All Star by Smash Mouth. The Way I Are by Timbaland. Anything by Rihanna like SOS, Umbrella, Don't Stop the Music, or Rude Boy. Yellow by Coldplay. That was released in 2000? Oh my god, I didn't realize it was that old. Coldplay's an old band. I always forget that. Somewhere Only We Know by Kian. What popular drink do you think is overrated? Liquid Death? No way, dude. Liquid Death is one of the best waters I've ever had. And that's not like, I'm not sponsored, nothing. Seriously, I would rather drink Liquid Death than any other bottled or canned or box water. It's so good. This person, wrong AF. Kombucha. I've tried several kinds of flavors and every single one smelled and tasted like nasty <laughs> feet. Why do you know what feet taste like, freak? Not to kink shame on the main timeline, but gross. <laughs> I'm thoroughly convinced that people only drink this stuff because it's trendy and supposedly healthy, and that secretly everyone agrees it's kind of gross. Starbucks. Celsius. Caffeinated energy drink. White Claws. Soda in general, it's basically liquid diabetes. Mountain Dew. It looks like it'll sear your insides and taste like pure sugar. I don't drink soda anymore, but this one, I could never understand why people liked it. Completely foul. Red Bull. It doesn't taste that good, and as far as I'm concerned, it doesn't do shit. Mountain Dew is better. I love Red Bull. <laughs> um, Red Bull has a peach nectarine flavor. It is probably the best energy drink I've ever had. Uh, I don't have it very often because I'd usually do no sugar energy drinks and there is not a no sugar peach nectarine Red Bull. But if there was, I'd be drinking one every day. Pumpkin spice latte. Tried it once and couldn't even get past the first sip. It's disgusting. When did you realize that you no longer wanted to be an adult? The first day I got a job. When I became one. Never happened. I'm not crazy about all the shit I have to do day by day, but I hated most of my childhood with a passion. Monthly payments. My car payment right now is fucking $500 a month. Uh, it sucks. <laughs> it's so bad. When I had to buy Tide Pods to do laundry and not for eating. We've all been there. We've all eaten the pod. We're all Gen Z here, except all the old people in the comments who are like 25. I'm 24. <laughs>
<laughs> when I graduated college and started the rat race, what is something you need to get off your chest? Fat. Me too. Me too. That's actually valid. Endometriosis fucking sucks. Stuck on the couch again, recovering from another surgery. I live every day in pain and no one takes it seriously as an illness. I feel like it's a major part of why I'm struggling so much with my mental health and it's really hard. What's the point of Amazon Prime now? Everything I order takes at least four days to be delivered and I get ads trying to watch shows on Prime Video and I get ads on Twitch unless I'm subbed, which has pushed me away from Twitch entirely. So what exactly is the justifying price of Prime? Sometimes I need to get a cat off my chest when I have to get up from the couch. My bra. The day has been long. I wish I was skinnier and prettier. Hey, I wish I was skinnier and prettier too. Lately, I've been doing squats in the Stairmaster to get my glutes more curvy. I think I'm seeing results, but I guess it's taking too long for me. I'm just really frustrated and impatient. I wish I could just love my booty as it is, but I can't. What would be the news that stops the world just to watch it? A nuclear attack. Asteroids headed straight for Earth. Official declaration of World War III. Aliens. This made me think of 9-11 and then the pandemic, so either something so globally catastrophic that even people not affected are stunned, or a mass tragedy that happens with an unspeakable amount of casualties. The queen is back and resurrected from the dead. Get Lizzie back in the f***ing box. <laughs> the McDonald's ice cream machine gets fixed. This is never gonna happen, guys. Come on. Stop living in your dream world. The ice cream machines at McDonald's are never getting fixed. Oh, now I just want a McFlurry. I want an Oreo McFlurry so bad now. Chris Rock slaps Will Smith. First human stepping foot on Mars. What was the worst dog name you've ever heard? Oh, I actually have a really good story myself here. So when I adopted my dog Jojo in 2018, I adopted him from a shelter. He had a previous owner who abandoned him. Um, his shelter name was Truman, like the Truman Show. Who the f names their dog Truman? Jojo is a much better name. And it's my boy and I love him. Dorg. <laughs> No, like he's called his dog Dorg the dog. No. <laughs> I think giving dogs generic human names is the funniest shit ever. Phil pooped on the bed. Tom got outside today. Elizabeth scared the mailman. Not sure if this one is the worst or the best. Buddy named his dog Ask Him, which would lead people to ask the dog, what's your name, boy? At which point my buddy would say, dogs can't talk, dummy. Nobody better say Peaches. I came here to say I couldn't think of a bad one, but I think Peaches is a pretty <laughs> dog name. Sorry. Your name is literally Danny, so I don't want to hear it. The cat. Guests were confused when they were asked if they met the cat yet. Load with Jik. I used to take my friends to school whose grandma's dog name was just the N-word. They were African-American before you get mad. What is your favorite American expression? There's an old saying in Tennessee. I know it's in Texas, probably in Tennessee, that says, Fool me once, shame on, shame on you. Fool me, you can't get fooled again. Call me your d***s. Well, butter my butt and call me a biscuit. Well, that grinds my gears. He never had the makings of a varsity athlete. They wrote me off. I ain't right back, though. Bless your heart, because it means you're a dumb ass. I'm happier than a tornado in a trailer park. Bad ass. Hot dang diggity dog. Don't piss on my leg and tell me it's raining. What? What do you mean you stop serving breakfast at 1030? What's a dish that is popular in your culture, but foreigners find it disgusting? French people are typing. What do you mean? I love French fries. My great grandfather fought in World War I, was captured, and was forced to live and work on an Austrian farm. The family on that farm was very nice to him, and they got along very well, all things considered. Somehow, his family got him a care package with ingredients to make his beloved Mama Liga, which he had craved for a long time. He was so excited and he happily shared some with his hosts. Their response? Constantine, this is for the pigs. Quick preface? I'm gonna say all these wrong, you know that. Wheat la coche. It's a fungus that grows on corn. Root beer. Do people not like root beer? I mean, like, there's different brands, I guess. Black pudding. I, wait, ew, that sounds kind of gross, but I don't know what it looks like, so. People seem to not understand the allure of biscuits and gravy. People don't like biscuits and gravy? What's going on? Chicken hearts. Give me a whole plate of kebabs. Thank you, friends, for being grossed out. More for me. Apparently, many non-Americans find the concept of a PBJ, peanut butter and jelly, sandwich disgusting. Somebody did explain it to me that it's just like a texture thing, but I don't know. I've grown up with it forever, so I like it. Haggis. I visited Scotland for the first time, and my first thought after eating was, what is this amazing pile of brown. Ketchup chips. Isn't that a Canadian thing? Because you also have all dressed chips, which is like ketchup and whatever else. Vegemite. Why can't you Americans understand that you don't eat it like Nutella? Beans on toast. All right, admittedly, I haven't tried it, but it just looks so gross. A pot, just wet beans. Ugh. Frog legs, but it's actually really good. Edit. I'm French, by the way. People who sit in the shower. Why? Sometimes I use the shower as a way to clear my head 
bed or escape my kids. Easier to cry. You can cry standing up. Never stand when you can sit. Now that I can get behind. I feel dizzy sometimes. Ah, eh, fair enough. I have a sofa in my shower. Oh, the smell of that thing has to be so bad. You're supposed to stand in the shower? My shower has a bench. Now that's the only one that really makes sense. If it's there, why would you ignore it? How do you pimp up your instant ramen? Egg. I would do this, but nobody's ever explained how I'm supposed to do it, so I don't want to just crack an egg and then have it be bad. Peanut butter and chili paste, baby! Add hoisin sauce. A quick Google shows that, yeah, that probably would. I boil an egg on top and add spinach. Spinach is an interesting addition. I might try it. Dried shiitake mushrooms, some sambal, and sesame oil. Mozzarella cheese, y'all. But cheese in soup, that seems kind of meh. Sliced mushrooms and peppers with some spinach. Maybe some tuna if I want protein and some garlic powder. Guess I know what I'm having for lunch. Buy it a gold chain, teach it to yell at women. See, they're the only one that understood the assignment. But also don't yell at women. That's, come on, guys. What meal slash snack do you eat when you're sad? Anything I find in the pantry, really. Mashed potatoes. Okay, Zach. Tortilla chips and homemade salad. I also eat this when I'm happy. Whenever, really. Doesn't matter. Just make sure it's junk and there's a lot of it. Didn't know you were eating my... <laughs> Slices of bread straight out of the bag. I can't even make fun of that. Like, I, I do that, so. Chocolate chips straight from the bag. Now that is crossing a line. Peanut butter and bologna Sammy. Toasted if I'm extra sad. One of mom's weird combos, but I love it. And now with her gone, they're an even more special comfort. But peanut butter and bologna? Ah! Uh, Kraft mac and cheese. It just brings you back to simpler times. Cheese toasty when I want something savory, or whatever biscuits we have when I want something sweet. Sweet. Pretty much the things we always have in the house. Spicy popcorn. Now, how do you go about it? Do you just dump, like, sriracha or, like, chili powder? 3 a.m. bowl of cereal. Cereal, cereal killer. What's your one discontinued fast food menu item you want back? Taco Bell, if you're listening, please, please bring the loaded grillers back. Just for a day. Just let me have the potato one, please. McDonald's snack wraps. I don't know if I ever had a chance to try them. The volcano burritos from Taco Bell were my fave fast food food item ever. Double Decker Taco. McDonald's Steak, Egg, and Cheese Bagel. McDonald's had bagels? That's awesome. Well, it is still McDonald's. Taco Bell Chili Cheese Burrito. Taco Bell really just has a lot of weird things they've tried over the years. McDonald's Fried Apple Pies. They still have apple pies, right? I, I'm guessing they're just no longer fried. Burger King Chicken Fries and KFC Popcorn Chicken. Technically, both are still available, but today's versions are inferior to the goodness I remember them tasting like as a kid. KFC Twister! I have not had KFC in so long, so I don't know what any of these ones are. McDonald Land Cookies. They've been gone for years now, but I'm still not over it. Burger King's Angry Whopper. I want that Halloween Whopper back, where it was like black buns for some reason. Not really fast food, but the Choco Taco ice cream deserved a 21-gun salute. McDonald's Shakes from the 90s. I remember how thick and amazing they were. Your face would go blue trying trying to suck them through a straw. Now they just taste like thin, overly sweet syrup. The consistency is all sorts of messed up. What's something that a person turning 30 probably should have done already? Be better than they were at 29. Don't run someone else's race. Just run yours and get better at it. Learn to stop living up to the suggestions slash expectations of strangers on the internet. Stared up at the stars at night and gloried at the wonders of the universe. Uh, they probably had that done at like age 10, so they're probably good. Learn how to cook. Cook. That's something you should learn before your 20s, I think. Understand there's more to life than drinking yourself into a coma every weekend. This is very true. It is very unhealthy as well. Done taxes by themselves. You see, but that's an impossible task. Who do you think I am, Sisyphus? I'm not gonna, I'm not messing with that. What was for you the best part of the pandemic? Not much, because I had to just work the whole time, and uh, I had to talk to people who didn't want to wear masks. I got furloughed. It meant I got to spend the pandemic shielding with my wife before she passed away last year. Words can't describe how grateful I am that I got so much extra quality time with my wife. Would have been impossible to have that much time if I had to be working full time. I guess there were some good things from the pandemic. No traffic. I would argue that statement. Lost 60 pounds. Wife lost 75. We were fat. We're not anymore. Way to go. I think your lost weight was found by many others over the pandemic. Ironically, not getting sick. Spending time with aging pets. 
I had to put down a cat and the last few months he got to lay on my keyboard and purr all day. I also have an old dog who is nearing the end and I'm really happy I had those months at home with her. Work from home has been legitimized in an unprecedented way. Once again, if anybody knows how to get one of them work from home jobs, uh, please let me know. I don't like going outside, not having to get up early in the morning. Again, I would argue against this. People standing six plus feet away from me at all times. Big if true, but if you have that one party pooper at the store, then ugh. My hermiting was normal. Oh yeah, the pandemic was great for introverts. I had two friends that I hung out with almost every night. They were just as isolated as I was during the day, so we weren't too worried about passing anything. None of us got sick. Spent the nights drinking, having bonfires and talking. Good times. Some of the best. People suddenly stopped expecting me to go be social. I got to spend months on end without having to decline a single invitation. It was so nice. Due to the stimulus checks, I was able to leave a toxic and abusive job without a job lined up ahead of time. Who was the most unlikable main character of a TV show? It's Always Sunny in Philadelphia. All five of them are goddamn trash. I couldn't love them more. Piper Chapman on Orange is the New Black. Walter White. Every choice he makes puts his family at risk, he refuses help out of stupid pride, and he's arrogant, and he wound up getting at least 160 people killed. He's a brilliant chemist, but a terrible businessman and an evil person. As a kid, I loathed Dr. Smith on Lost in Space. I didn't understand why they didn't just friggin' murder him. Sheldon Cooper from The Big Bang Theory went from a clueless, socially awkward side character in the first couple of years to a self-centered, narcissistic bully. I don't know why they ever hung out with him. Bojack Horseman. Though I suppose that's the point. Ted from How I Met Your Mother is just the worst. June on Handmaid's Tale. She had gotten multiple people killed through her selfish actions. This current season is just a power fantasy from the writers and ends every episode with her staring at the camera menacingly. I love that show, but I noticed like 60% of it is close-ups on Elizabeth Moss's face, LMAO, and her mouth is always freaking open. Ross from Friends. I hate him so much. And he doesn't even eat the smaller friends to assert dominance, which makes him suck twice as much. Every single character on Succession is the worst person in the world. Raymond on Everybody Loves Raymond. Conceited little bastard. Dora. She was so annoying, even for a six-year-old. Rachel Berry from Glee. She was a bitch and never got what she deserved. House. A person like that in real life would be unbearable. I've seen clips of the show and I'm pretty sure he violates so many medical laws. What should you never cheap out on? Legal advice. I hope I never have to get a lawyer because A, I can't afford one and B, I wouldn't be able to afford a good one. Shoes and a bed. You spend a good chunk of your life in one or the other. Your teeth. You only get the one set and tooth infections can set you back tens of thousands. Brush twice a day, floss a couple times a week, and do your best to scrounge up the $200 a year for a professional cleaning. However, doing more than this is better if possible. Yeah, yeah, tell that to my nine cavities and my empty wallet. Tools. Buy cheap tools once. If you use it enough to wear it out or break it, buy the nicest version of that tool you can afford. Kind of like a trial run, I guess. If you're a hiker slash camper slash backpacker, your actual backpack. Tattoos. I suppose, I mean, in the general sense to avoid infection, eye surgery. Yeah, don't want to go dead spacing yourself now, do you? A quality PSU when building a PC. Don't want to start a fire, so yeah. What food will you never eat again? At the rehearsal dinner for my brother's wedding, they served pumpkin soup with lavender sprinkled on top. I don't like pumpkin, but I took a few sips of the soup out of politeness. It wasn't the pumpkin that made me gag, though. It was the lavender. I'm getting a little nauseated just thinking about it, and this was nearly 20 years ago. The taste in my mouth from the lavender lasted longer than my brother's marriage. Oh, why'd you have to burn him like that? Octopus. It tasted fine, but in the years since I ate it, I decided I wouldn't eat the hyper-intelligent animals. So, only humans now. Sea urchin. I always wanted to try it after watching chefs treat it like a delicious treasure. I went to a top-end Austin sushi restaurant and gave it a go. Its texture was like an egg yolk, the slightest membrane holding a thick liquid together. It bursts in your mouth and filling it with 
sea snot. Never again. That's not the experience I had with it. It tasted like scratchy Play-Doh going down your throat and uh, My college made these spicy chicken wraps that were probably one of the best foods I've ever eaten. Not only do I live states away from where I went to college, but the last I heard, they changed the wrap station to something else entirely. So I'll probably never eat one again, even though I really wish I could. That nasty stir fry my wife keeps making. I don't know why she thinks it's so great, but it isn't. All right, buddy, maybe you should go and talk to her about it instead of putting her on blast on the internet? The food I ate yesterday. But I'm R slash technically the truth, mall Chinese. Because I pooped on the floor while I was vomiting. Bread. Not because I dislike it or anything, it's just that damn celiac disease. And the gluten-free stuff is just similar enough to make you miss the real thing. And at like three times the price. Up and go. When I was 17, I found one liter bottles of the chocolate up and go on special for 75 cents because they were on about to expire. I got really high that evening and guzzled the whole three liters. That night I woke up took three steps, just made it to my kitchen sink, and puked my absolute guts up. Collapsed back into bed, and in the morning, the sink looked like it was full of little twigs. Eleven years later, and even the smell of that <laughs> makes my stomach turn. Everyone over 18, what advice would you give a 17-year-old? Do not screw up your credit score in your early years. Take care of your teeth. Seriously, if you neglect them now, you'll be constantly emptying your wallet to fix them in the future. There are 7.7 .7 billion people in the world. It's okay to be moderate. Enjoy every minute of your life as much as you can and don't be in a rush to be older than you are at any age. Travel. Travel a lot. The experiences are priceless. You can always rebuild wealth, but you can never get back a moment of time. While I agree with this, people don't often just have money to go travel and I'm not going to get loans out so I can go fly across the countries. Something insignificant can change the trajectory of your whole life and there's no such thing as as going back. You are not important. I think they're phrasing this wrong, but I kind of agree. I think they really mean don't be a pompous a-hole because you have 300 followers on TikTok. What is the most quotable movie? Monty Python and the Holy Grail. The Princess Bride. Spaceballs. Seeing a trend that it's all the funny spoof movies. Mean Girls. That is so fetch. Anchorman. I think my favorite part of Anchorman is when Jack Black kicks a dog off a bridge. Forrest Gump, for sure. And I just started running. The Big Lebowski. Yeah, well, that's just, you know, like, your opinion, man. Hot Fuzz. All right, sue me. I haven't watched Hot Fuzz yet. I'll get to it. Napoleon Dynamite. Remember, vote for Pedro. What snack is 10 out of 10? Sometimes a piece of toast with butter just hits so good. Going back to the medieval times, I see. My wife. His wife. Her husband. Definitely popcorn. I just wish movie theater popcorn would be like $3 instead of 30? Chips and guacamole. While I think guacamole is really good, it really depends on where you're getting it from. Apple slices with cinnamon. Ooh, I used to eat this all the time when I was a kid. Handful of dark chocolate chips. Then every handful after that. I'm gonna have to say no on that. Don't like dark chocolate. If you give me dark chocolate, I will spit on you. I'm kidding. I'm too scared to do that. Snickers. I was nervous when they were gonna get rid of the vein, but I'm glad it's there. Oreos and milk. Cookies and milk in general, I would say. Watermelon. Oh, it's just so nice. On Like, when you're having a really rough day, you just munch on in. Just... Oh. Kinder Bueno is pretty amazing. Chocolate-covered pretzels. Dangerous. Oh, God, yeah, I... Whew, don't bring those near me. Doritos with dip, especially while gaming. I agree, but be careful, because you don't want all that Dorito dust to get all over your keyboard or your controller. It's bleh. French onion sun chips. Ooh, those are bangers. Cashews. I know it may sound ironic, but I'm not that big of a nut guy. How would you like to be executed? Death by Snoo Snoo. Not very much. Well, unfortunately, you do have to choose because we're doing it anyways. Real talk? Probably general anesthesia. Just let me drift off to sleep. Does sound like the most peaceful way to go. I guess I'd want to follow in the footsteps of my great-grandfather. He flew a plane into some ships during World War II. Oh, no. Being hit with a foam ball once a day for 60 years till I die. Nuclear bomb. As long as I'm close enough to it to be instantly vaporized, I'm on board. Lather me in honey and stick me in a bear cage. I want witnesses, too. Quick and painless. What's a common saying from your native language that sounds really weird when translated into English? My English isn't the yellow from the egg. I ripped my ass 
open to achieve this and that. Basically means I worked really hard to achieve this or that. I take care of my own onions, which basically means I mind my own business in Quebec. Je me coude de mes onions. And to anyone French out there or French Canadian, I don't care. There is no cow on the ice. Close doesn't shoot the hair. Caught with your beard in the letterbox. Don't buy the pig in the bag. Swedish. I don't even know what those could mean. Let's show him where the fish pees from. Essentially, show him who's boss. Why would it be that? The turkey thought about Sunday, but Saturday its head was cut off. In my language, people say to sh the d as you're disturbing me. Obviously in a very offensive way. And to say that something sucks a lot. What a weird, weird thing to say. I speak Arabic and Spanish, and in both languages they say change the air, which means go on a walk or breathe some fresh air. Spanish, cambiar aire. I would try to say the Arabic version, but I'm going to ruin it and I can't. I just can't. In Portuguese, pepper in the other's ass is refreshing. When something is cool in Germany, we say geil, which means horny. An example, this movie was so horny. Actually means, this movie was so cool. What's your favorite way to say, that's dumb, or no, I will not consider your input without being rude. Just smile and nod, then completely ignore everything they said. This is my go-to move at work. Uh, sorry co-workers if you're watching. An alternative method would be to, I'll keep that in mind, and instantly throw that out of your mind. I'll consider your input, then get back to you. That's nice. Anyways, unfortunately I don't believe that would work the way you intend. I am more confident in this method. Yes, that's a thought. Mm-hmm. For sure. That, that was a thought for sure. Thank you for sharing. I don't know, that could still be a little condescending. If you were given one billion dollars tomorrow, what's the first thing you'd do? Welcome to McDonald's. What can I get started for you? I'd like a double filet o fish <gasps> Right away. Lawyer the f*** up. Oh yeah, so many people are going to be coming for you. Take the day off. Honestly, just quit at that point. Change all my personal information. Change your name, change your house. I mean, because now you can afford one. I would spend it wisely in one day. Mm, I don't believe you. I'd hire a bunch of body doubles and have them slowly show up at a restaurant until there was no tables left. Retire. Yeah, I mean, you really don't have to do anything else after that point. Travel the world. And the seven seas. Everybody's looking for something. Celebratory masturbation. Yeah, but you can do that without a billion dollars. If you were offered one million dollars to sing an entire song with no mistakes, what song would you sing? I could sing Fly Me to the Moon, but I'd make a lot of mistakes. Happy birthday to you. No, that's a dangerous game because what if they want a specific person's name and they don't tell you? Then you messed up and you don't get a million dollars. The ABC song. Elamino P. I f***ed up. Tequila. I'd get the timing wrong. That does bring the question, are you singing it a cappella or do you have the backing track? My own song I wrote. Who the f*** are you to tell me I made a mistake? I wrote it. Anything that comes out of my mouth is exactly part of my song. Sing my song, collect the money. Thanks. Easy. Twinkle, twinkle, little star. Most people don't know verse three to five. There are more verses? Everyone in here is thinking in two dimensions. You are A, picking a song with lyrics and B, assuming under pressure you won't make any mistakes. What constitutes a mistake is also amorphous. Is a change in intonation a mistake? What about a slight lisp or slight draw out of a word or bar? The only answer is 433 by John Cage. Not only is it not a song with lyrics, but it also doesn't even have music. You would just stand around, not uttering a sound, and collect your money. I guess don't sneeze though. Around the World by Daft Punk. Edit, or maybe Call on Me by Eric Prides. That's more of an endurance and stamina contest at that point, because those songs just go on and on. Pokemon original theme song. But are you singing the full song or just the intro song from the show? Because it's cut down, but there's a lot more to it. What songs can a mute sing? Spanish national anthem. That one then. What normal thing in society can you just not wrap your head around? How so many people are invested in celebrity drama. I have enough in my social circle. I could care less about someone else's relationships on the other side of the country. Kardashians being worshipped. Do they do anything like do they have clothing lines, makeup? I don't, I mean, I know the Jenners, whatever. Alcohol. It's genuinely just as bad as drugs, yet it's perfectly acceptable. I mean, I'd say weed is way more tame, and for some reason it's demonized as a drug. Being mature by having a boring job and wearing a sad button-up shirt while tucking your shirt into your
your genes. No, you don't get it. I love being a corporate stiff that has no personality. Announcing you are having sex on the regular is weird, but tell family you are trying to have a baby and no one cares. Like, hey, I'm about to cream in your daughter later. Funeral wakes. I cannot understand putting an embalmed body on display for people to view. I know some people find it helpful to get closing, but it viscerally disturbs me. Yeah, that's why I'm opting just to get cremated, make me into dust, and I'm good. Mayonnaise. Is just the idea of mayonnaise, or just what? What about it? Everything. Because the head isn't stretchable, nor can it bend around things. All right, smarty pants. What is a very popular quote, but is often misquoted? Money is the root of all evil. That is a misquote. The real quote, the love of money is the root of all evil. Luke, I am your father. Oh yeah, that's just the one of the biggest Mandela effects of all time. How the turntables. Oh yeah, that is misquoted. It's supposed to be how the table turners. If you can't explain it to a six-year-old, you don't understand it yourself. Einstein never said that. Most of his quotes are random things other people have said. You are what you eat is incorrect. It was, in French, tell me what you eat. I will tell you what you are. Let them eat cake. Marie Antoinette never said cake. She said, let them eat brioche, which is a type of rich bread made with eggs and butter. Just doesn't roll off the tongue, though. I couldn't care less. I hate this one. If you could care less, it means you do actually care. One small step for man, one giant leap for mankind. The real quote is, one small step for a man, one giant leap for mankind. While Armstrong stated that is what he intended to say, careful examination of the recordings does not support this. Most likely he intended to say one small step for a man, but got the line wrong when delivering it. It was just the heat of the moment. Give the guy some slack. The proof of the pudding is in the tasting. The proof is not in the pudding. How the F do you make friends as an adult if you don't drink? First step is to get a hobby. Then while doing that hobby, you will meet other people. People that you obviously have at least one thing in common with. I made some friends by volunteering. Step one, don't drink. Step two, make friends. I feel like we're missing some steps here. Get a dog. Dogs are kind of a gateway to people just coming up and talking to you. Jim, yeah, but what if I'm lazy? I just hang out with my wife. She's all I've needed for the last 14 years. Same here. Your wife's all I've needed for the past three years. The simple answer is you don't. You see, once the human male reaches adulthood, any and all previous forms of joy or happiness are forgotten when the soul is crushed by the pressures of literally f***ing everything in your life. Approach a random person and ask them if they want to be friends. You know, I tried this one. It doesn't really work, because most of the people that I tried doing it to were like, why do you have a knife? And started running away, so I don't get it. Rock climbing for me. There's an indoor gym not far from my house. I'll actually agree with this one. Rock climbing is a pretty nice community to get into, and it's helped me kind of work past my fear of heights. Still there, but it's uh, less. Lemon, lime, and bitters. No, 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 they said not drinking. What's a food combo that sounds disgusting until you try it? I've never tried it, but I can only assume chicken and waffles must not be as gross as it sounds since it's everywhere in the South. I'm just not a huge fan of mixing two different flavors, savory and sweet. That just doesn't make sense to me. Nacho cheese Doritos dipped in sour cream. I promise it's actually really good. Peanut butter and rice. It's shockingly fine. I wouldn't call it good, but it's fine. I used to think mixing chili and mac and cheese looked disgusting until I tried it. It's not as bad as it looks. White rice with Campbell's tomato soup straight from the can. Mix ratio is whatever it is oatmeal consistency. Pinch of salt. Yum. I'm normally adventurous, but that just sounds like baby food. I'm not gonna go for that. If your country was a person in high school, how would you describe them? Needs everything on paper, multiple copies, watermark of the high school, a fax number, because the internet is still new territory. Welcome to Germany. Hey buddy, let's be friends, guy. Getting munchies for some poutine now, mm? Holy heck, I felt this in my soul. Super arrogant and bipolar. USA? Of course. Wait, how does this work if every country has different high school tropes? Friends with two of the strongest guys who also hate each other to death. India. Person who always got free periods. The nice kid who's somehow best friends with most popular kid. Let me guess. Canada? Bingo. Good at sport. Everyone's mate. Big drinker. Can only be Australia. How do you respond to what's up? My blood pressure. Eh, not much. This. Not much is always my answer. Inflation. Sadly. Saw it. <laughs> Saw it. <laughs> is it just me or does it smell like up dog in here? Now you might be asking, what is up dog? And my answer to you is nothing much. And 
and I said, hey, 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 I said, hey, oh, what's going on? Chillin', foo. Halloween is coming up. What are you gonna dress as this year? I don't know what I'm gonna do. Ah, man. Sorry, Jar Jar Binks, clearly. Misa in a one piece. I have two costumes ready that require varying levels of effort. I've decided that if I stay home with mom, I'm dressing as a witch. And if I go out, I'm dressing as a plague doctor. Pennywise. Ready to scare some kids this Halloween, huh? My daughter and I will be Nala and Scar from The Lion King. Boy, I bet you're glad they dropped the Scar tried to get with Nala before she dipped subplot. That would be awkward. What? Yeah, that was the original intended reason for why Nala left to find help. Impossible. What's the sitch? Like a cast member from the live adaptation of Cats. I'll haunt your dreams, suckas. As long as you keep your hyper-realistic buttholes out of here, it's fine by me. Just the same exhausted bat <laughs> crazy bitch I dressed as last year. Sleepy Vecna. How would that even work? What are you looking forward to in October? Uh, mine personally, um, sometime next week I have to carve a pumpkin uh, with the Fortnite logo on it because that's what my Twitter people voted on. Hey, speaking of which, go follow me on Twitter, by the way. Says Mason Live. I tweet a lot. My taco Halloween costume. That sounds fun and flavorful. My haunted garage. I built walls to set up a small maze in my garage for people in my area to enjoy. It has creepy music, a few animatronics, and other decorations. I did it over two years ago and finally have the chance to do it again. I just decorated my yard for Halloween yesterday and I'm in heaven. Halloween is the best. Leaving for vacation. Hey, I hope you have a great time. Just getting into that time of year. I love everything from Halloween to New Year's. Also, I wanted to appreciate the positivity you're spreading in this thread. It made my day. Sober October. Hopefully I can last the whole month. I hope you accomplish your goal. Yeah, puzzles for breakfast. I hope you do too. The GTA 6 announcement. My brother in Christ, we're not getting that announcement anytime soon. Not with the, the leak and the delay. Wearing flanels and beanies. Halloween. I need to catch ghost Pokemon for a quest thing. Oh, yes, a Pokemon Go player. Hey, does anyone else play Pokemon Go? Because I love Pokemon Go. I play it all the time, almost every day. If you couldn't tell, I like Pokemon. One month closer to tax returns. Get back some of the money stolen from me. What 1990s thing needs to make a comeback. Affordable housing. God, please. I want nothing more in this life to be a homeowner. Indestructible Nokia cell phones. No thanks. Affordable college. You didn't need to take out loans. Oh, but you have to pay for all the fun college campus amenities that you don't use. Grunge music. I, you know, I think we're good. Regular old birthday parties with pizza and cake. Sick of Etsy and Pinterest parties. You know what? That's so true. What happened to going just like bowling and having a pizza for your birthday, huh? God, I want to go bowling. Complete absence of social media and smartphones. Big budget films that aren't superheroes. Uh, I mean, those exist. <laughs> like Transformers and uh, Uncharted. Those are the only thing I can think of. Those pastel colored windbreakers. Oh yeah. Can we please bring those back? RIP 90s blockbuster action films that were actually fun to watch and didn't explicitly force a social message. Uh, woke bad? Me no like. Shut up. Bowling alley style patterned carpets. What's your opinion on coworkers dating? I think it's okay as long as their private life doesn't interfere with professional life. Like no making out in the office or special treatment. There's nothing wrong with it so long as everything works out. The problem is it doesn't always work out. Ouch. It goes south and now the workplace is infected. Someone once told me, don't and eat in the same place. I don't give a shit what consenting adults do. My best friend and his wife met where we all worked together in the 90s. And they have two wonderful adult kids and have been together like 25 years. Do not dip your pen in the company ink. Bad idea. What should be avoided while being naked? Do not cook up bacon in a pan when naked. Woodworking, unless you're working that wood. Oh, touching chilies. You don't want <laughs> No. <laughs> Not the freaking jalapenos, dude. Oh, no. <laughs> don't use a knitted blanket if your nipples are pierced. I feel like this was a personal experience. In my case, mirrors. Please tell. Him fat. Big bone. Yeah. <laughs> Probably being in public. Probably? Probably. What is y'all's favorite dog breed? Whatever my dog is. I have no idea what he is. He's a big old mutt, but his name is Jojo, and he's the cutest dog of all time. Way cuter than whatever your dog is. Golden Retriever. Greyhound. They're so sweet and friendly. Alaskan Husky. I met some in Alaska and they are smaller than Siberian Huskies and have different coloring and have the personality of Huskies. German Shepherd. They are not only intelligent, but also incredibly intuitive. They're amazing dogs. Collies, Shelties, or the new love of my life, St. Bernard. I'm just destined
destined to be covered in dog hair all my life. French Bulldogs are Boston Terrier, but the best doggo of all is a 100% good dog, Yorkshire Terrier. A lot of people see them as annoying lap dogs, but they are very smart and great dogs when you properly socialize them. Welsh Corgi. Huskies. They have so much personality, and the way they can carry on a conversation with a person is amazing and adorable. I love and miss my Huskies. Poodles are the best. Boxer. I like big dogs. I had a Boxer X Mastiff once, and he was the best boy. Australian Cattle Dog Healer. Can we just all agree that all dogs are good dogs, and there's no such thing as a bad dog, only a bad owner? What song do you want played at your funeral? Black Parade by My Chemical Romance. Uh, actually, it's Welcome to the Black Parade by My Chemical Romance. Whatever. Me too. Anything that will upset my family, but make my friends laugh. Another one bites the dust by Queen. <laughs> Sandstorm, the rude. A hey, classic. The Circle of Life from The Lion King. OMG by Usher. I still haven't found what I'm looking for by U2. Johnny Cash. Hurt. These days by the Foo Fighters. Snoop Dogg. Drop it like it's hot. What's one thing you hated as a child but love now? Bedtime. Speak for yourself. I don't have a bedtime. Naps. Shopping. I hated going around with my mother to watch her window shop, but now on my days off, that's all I do. Silence and quiet. Cleaning. I clean like a motherfucker now, and I'm so happy afterwards. I like to go and look at the newest items and gadgets to help too. Getting spanked. Hey, <laughs> I don't kink shame. To each their own, man. Brussels sprouts. Good stuff. There are so many better vegetables than Brussels sprouts, like, I don't know, broccoli, spinach, cauliflower, arugula, carrots, even asparagus. Vegetables, for sure. Not even up for debate. I used to put broccoli in my pockets at the dinner table to hide that I've not eaten them. Today, I love broccoli, both raw and cooked. This MF straight raw dog and broccoli. Good lord. Not having anything to do. When I know that I have a day off with no plans, no errands, and a whole day to myself? That's a treat. Mushrooms. Ugh, disgusting. How do you get better at small talk? <laughs> I'm going to be taking notes this thread because, oh my God, do I need it. Be an active listener. Listen to what they say and ask questions that are relevant to what they said. If you encounter someone who isn't interested in talking, happens all the time, find a polite reason to move on. Well, it was nice meeting you. I'm going to get a different drink and I just saw someone I know or the president needs me, etc. Edit. Oh, and actually care about what they say, even if it's not the most interesting thing in the world to you. They're saying something about themselves and the kind thing to do is pay attention. Spend time with people you hate but have to pretend to like. You'll quickly learn how to waste their time with useless conversation topics so you don't have to engage with their actual personality. Try to pick news or recent stuff you read, watch, hear about of you need something to say or increase the conversation length. Take a risk, be real, don't chase funny, and be damn sure you ain't judging. Don't be embarrassed to appear stupid. In my experience, most people will gladly talk to themselves if you only let them. All you have to say is, yeah? Mm-hmm. Huh. Working customer service for a bit and you'll learn quick. I've been in customer service for six years and I still can't freaking do it. It's so hard to small talk. I am so unbearably awkward. What's something that shouldn't exist? Those YouTubers with dyed hair and clickbait thumbnails will not stop screaming in every video. Animal abusers. TikTok. I don't think I need to explain. I don't know, man. TikTok's pretty fun. Child beauty pageants. Mosquitoes. It's sad that not only does stuff like sexism, racism, and homophobia still persist, but it's actually worsening in some parts of the world. Humanity. Nah, JK. It's not Nestle. Vapes. Reddit. So true. Hey, 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 hey. Only after Twitter. What causes you to snap in an instant? Someone pulling at my clothes. I go from zero to incandescent in a fraction of a second. I only discovered this is an issue for me in the last few weeks when my toddler started pulling on my clothes. Literal instant rage. I have to ramp down. So freaky. The wind. It makes me so angry. Don't talk to me if it's windy. When people blow through yield signs. People using Bible quotes to win an argument. People talking in the cinemas while the movie's on. Hearing that God forsaken baby shark song. People touching my glasses on the f***ing glass part. When I get my earphone or headphone cables tangled in something when I get up. Really gets to me. Probably a sign I should just go wireless at this stage. If someone sucks their teeth at me, I tell them if they do it again, I'll knock every damn one of those teeth out of their mouth. A really smooth jazz beat. What is your dream job? Absolutely nothing. Working is not part of my aspirations. Retired financial set for life. One that pays enough for me to live in the GTA without having to work two jobs. To be an archaeologist like Indiana Jones. Department of Natural Resources and Wildlife Technician. Send me in the backwoods to explore areas that are undisturbed, chief. A drummer. Name checks out. I work the conveyor belt in a tooth factory and I keep losing my actual teeth. What's better with butter? Just about everything. Corn on the cob. Toast. I prefer my toast with jelly. Mashed potatoes. A brezel. Portuguese muffins. Also blueberry muffins that are toasted. Warm banana bread. It would be easier to list things not better with butter. Popcorn, corn on the cob, green beans, and a baked potato. Scrambled eggs and cook them in butter. What are the worst places you could get stuck in? North Korea. Hey, I mean, speaking straight facts right now. Rural East Texas, especially after dark, and if you're a person of color. A wood chipper or an industrial
Mario Shredder, a Denny's bathroom, an underwater cave. Ah, don't worry, I got a potion of water breathing on me. Your zipper. Ugh, ah, God, I shivered just thinking about that. Russia. Oh yeah, an enclosed water slide. Ooh, no, that just, it triggers my claustrophobia. It gives me the heebie-jeebies. What is the most satisfying smell? Whatever that one smell is from childhood after mom cooked your favorite dinner. The smell of dish soap in that meal is a unique smell. The smell after cutting grass. Cinnamon. Fresh laundry. Vanilla. Baking bread. The smell of banana bread. Oh, oh, so good. Rain. My favorite smell personally. Fuel. A new book. Fucking <laughs> nerd. When I fart and it clears the room, the more, oh my gosh, that's disgusting, the better. It's the smell of satisfaction. <laughs> this guy's a freak. This guy's a sociopath. Christ almighty. Coffee while you're still asleep. Waking up to that is love. The smell that rolls in on a cool breeze right when the sun is going down in early fall and everything is quiet. Women with long fake nails? How in God's name do you wipe? Easy, you just wipe with the tissue across your fingers instead of digging up in there with the tips. You, you wipe more long with nails. The nails act as a poo shovel. I just threw up a little. <laughs> hey, I think I did too. I have long natural nails, but I've never understood this question. Are you guys sticking your fingers up your ass when you wipe? Like, what? You just wipe it like normal. I mean, not a normal where fingers enter the hole, but you know, my normal where I just wipe it with toilet paper. The nails don't get in the way. I don't notice a difference when I have shorties. They use the three seashells. Get some press-ons and try. I can't describe it. you like, just do. Even when my nails are short, I'm not scraping my hole with them. Built-in poop knives. With toilet roll, obviously. Better question, how do you do anything at all? Maybe some of them have bidets. Bidet to you, sir. Who's a fictional character that's clearly a jerk, but you can't help love them. Everybody on Always Sunny. Beat me to it. By season nine, I'm starting to hate Dennis most of the time, but the rest of them I love. I should be clear that I love hating Dennis. Negan from The Walking Dead. He's clearly a sociopath, but the smile and playful attitude makes him somewhat likable. Didn't he kill everyone's favorite character? Spoilers, I'm sorry. My bad. Mr. Bean. The Joker. With all that happened to him, no wonder he turned dark. Jack White. Okay. Snape. Gaston. No one entertains me as much as Gaston. Oscow from NGE. I don't know what that is. Sherlock Holmes. Eric Cartman. Bojack Horseman. Seek some help, my friend. What food ingredient could be added to any food and still taste great? MSG. A pinch of salt. Works well in savory and sweet food alike. Real butter. People think restaurants are magic or something for reliably making food that tastes better than what you make at home. The difference is that they use butter rather than seed or vegetable oil. Fat isn't evil. It's what flavor sticks to. Cheese. Definitely. Water. Especially if you're frying something, makes food flaming hot. Honey. Salt or sugar. Almost all foods contain either or both in some form. MSG fuel. In caveman language, what was your worst date like? I show rock, but she don't like rock. She like twig. I bring twig. She like rock. Ugh. Feel that in Ugg's soul. Me go hunting with new tribe friend. Instead, find place where mammoth already dead. People trade shinies for meat, say good enough. While eat, choke on meat, spit in tribe friend face. Him mad. Lucky him forgive. Me rock brain stupid. Me no tribe friend long time before realize tribe friend really love friend. He say hunting trip really date and me stupid dum dum. Lucky he try again. Sex good. Spill milkshake bad. Bed yuck. Still marry. Yabba dabba do. That sound like good. One time me did yabba dabba don't. She only looked at the Uga Bunga device. Ugh, chug many mug of grug. Go blug. Ugh, incomprehensively remorseful. <laughs> she a 10, but unga when I bunga. When I uga, she booga. So like a hard four. What video games are more fun to watch others play? Horror. The games I am bad at. Cod Zombies Easter Eggs. All. I like to play occasionally, but to be honest, video games kind of stress me out. I always feel like I'm making an ass out of myself and f***ing up what should be smooth gameplay. VR, when the player accidentally interacts with the real world. Guitar Hero and Rock Band. I'm pretty dexterous and actually good at music, but I suck at those games. I can't get past medium difficulty ever. Any game that's cutscene heavy. I love playing games, but if I'm interrupted every 20 minutes with a three minute cutscene, I just can't get into it as much. They're fun to watch because I like the story, but a lot of cutscenes take me out of the game experience. None of them. I'm with you. Watching other people play games is like watching paint dry. I don't get it. I like watching other people that I like have fun, I think is the thing that I'm about. What is your guilty pleasure? Making funny faces in grocery stores at babies while their parents aren't looking. Mine is Dua Lipa. There, I said it. Cleaning my ear with a Q-tip, especially when you get that cold water on it. Ah, damn. Farting loudly when I'm alone. Feels good. 80s synth pop. F*** it. Fan fiction. Y'all ever read Heat Waves? <laughs> 
Writing terrible self-indulgent escapist fantasy that no one but me is ever or will read. Watching Handmaid's Tale and eating pancakes. You get to have a conversation with yourself from 2.5 years ago when the pandemic started. What would you advise or say? Prepare yourself. You're about to find out that there are a lot more assholes in the world than you originally thought. Ironically, I just caught COVID yesterday for the first time. Was starting to think I was a master dodger. Don't panic. You're not going to run out of toilet paper. I'm sorry for all the trauma. I hope we get better. That donut you're planning to leave on your desk for tomorrow? Take that home now or you're not seeing it for two years. And when you do, you'll wish you hadn't. Don't buy those Jimmy Eat World tickets. This is going to go on for a while and one of your favorite restaurants is going to go under because of it. So go eat there now. Worst feeling of all time. One of your favorite restaurants goes, God. What job do you have an insane respect for, but you'd never personally do? Namely McDonald's, but really any major fast food chain. Like y'all are champions, but I could never. I'd lose my mind. Garbage collectors and waste management. Imagine how would be our cities without it. How would be our cities indeed? Anything medical. Oh yeah, 100%. I could never work in it because uh, blood is yucky. Paramedics. I actually know someone who's a paramedic and the amount of stuff they see on a day-to-day -day basis is crazy. Waste management. 911 operator. Oh yeah, this seems like it's in the same vein of paramedics. Like just the amount of stuff you hear on a day-to-day -day, has to be so draining. Rescue diving. Pretty much anything underwater in the ocean. The unknown down below low scares me. I do have slight thalassophobia, but only if I'm like actually out in the ocean and I look below and there's nothing because there could be something. Social workers. What exactly do social workers do? I, I'm not really clear on that. Underwater welding. I think it could be cool if it's like, you know, right on the shore, but if it's deep, deep sea welding, oh no. Psych ward nursing. My roommate is actually doing that right now for her nursing school and oh gosh, the stories she's telling me are not great. Therapists. I mean, like, really, I respect them because they're kind enough to listen to all of our problems, but I have enough problems of my own to listen to other people. Just keep in mind that therapists do have their own therapists. Medicine. The study, the hours, the shitty pay in the early years, the workplace abuse. I like my time too much to be a doctor. Who is the most evil person who is still alive? Omar al-Bashir immediately came to mind. Former president of Sudan who was behind the Darfur genocide. Absolutely vile human. Min Aung Lain, the Myanmar junta who committed the coup, still actively killing their citizens every day. He recently airstrikes the village school, resulting 11 plus children death just because they heard rebels are hiding in the village. Possibly Pedro Lopez if he's still alive. One of the most prolific serial killers in history who may have killed 300 people as of 1998 when he was released. His whereabouts are still unknown since 98. OP found the death note, I presume. What about the people from the the cartel videos. All of these political figures are evil as shit, but I'm not saying they're not, but have they literally peeled people's faces off or cut someone's heart out in front of their kid while they're still alive? Those people are as evil as they come. What disturbs me is that there are so many nominees. Who was a celebrity you want to sleep with, but would be embarrassed to tell people about? He would have been way too old for me, but Christopher Lee. That voice, and if he role-played as Saruman, oh. This comment section is not nearly as cursed as I expected. Also, this would make a great guessing game in the right sub. Noel Fielding. When I saw him on Taskmaster dressed in his pointy little witch boots playing soccer with an unreasonable amount of skill, it made me feel things. I wouldn't be embarrassed about this one, TBH. Kermit the Frog. I will not be elaborating at this time. He's kind, gentle, has leadership skills, and is musically talented. This is not shameful. Julie Andrews. Something about those Mary Poppins petticoats and the parasol awakens my chim chim cheree. Will Willem Dafoe. The embarrassing part is the fact that he's genuinely old enough to be my grandfather. Willem Dafoe. He looks like a cuddler. Alright, so a lot of people are horny for Willem Dafoe. Gordon Ramsay. I'd tell, but no one asks. Edit. Please, dear God, stop DMing me pickup lines for Gordon Ramsay. Justin Long? I don't know why. That would be embarrassing, but no one talks about him like that. Jermaine Clement. Mm, yeah, I can see it. God, I'm so fucking shameless. Can't even think of one I'd be embarrassed to tell someone about. Hey, if you like who you like, then you there's no shame in it. You get $100 million, but you must make one species extinct. What do you do, botfly? F*** anything that lays eggs in people. Phrasing. Don't kink shame me. Bedbugs can f*** off and die. Not all heroes wear capes, but some heroes have $100 million now. Human head lice. I'm just shocked because I thought lice was a super common thing. I've never had it. Well, knock on wood, am I right? 
fleas. All of dog kind will thank you. I'd pick some fucking parasite like the ones that live in the eyes of small children in Africa. I am glad that people aren't picking like normal animals. They're picking just generally bad things. So thank you. What's an annoying thing people base their entire personality around? Social media following. It's not my whole personality, but it's definitely a plus. TikTok trends. Do people make that their personality? I mean, I guess sometimes. I mean, what's something that's not annoying when people base their entire personality around it? Oh, yep, no cap to be found here. I might take time to answer this stupid question when I get done with my CrossFit workout. First rule of CrossFit, never don't talk about CrossFit. They're Jeep Wrangler. I was almost a Wrangler kid in school, but uh, thank God I chose against. The Grim Reaper comes to your house to take your life. What do you say? You'll never catch me alive. Jumps off balcony. Grim Reaper catches him in midair. And then they kiss. Look, if that's not how I die, then I don't want to die. What took you so long? You were supposed to be here at 1. It's 1.45. You're late and I'm busy. Bye. Points behind the Grim Reaper. What's that? Runs off. I know I'll be caught, but I'd like to go out playing a fun gag. Death will giggle as he starts chasing you. It's been a while since someone did that. Hee <laughs> I'm gonna get you. You're gonna die. <laughs> How do your bones move without muscles and a nervous system? Is there a brain in your skull? How do you see and hear without eyes and ears? Asking the hard-hitting questions. You need to know. Make sure to write those down, actually, so we can figure it out. If you had to be a vegan for the rest of your life, what do you think would become your go-to meal? Falafel with hummus in a wrap with salad, onions, tomatoes. As a Middle Eastern, we eat this pretty often without thinking about it as vegan food. Proves it could be easier than we might think. Rice and beans. Total comfort food. Can adjust seasons to your desired taste. Dal and rice. It already is my go-to meal, though. I'm never not in the mood for it. Baked potatoes. It already is, so it would be hard. Anything with mushrooms. I'm not a mushroom guy. I it just, like, the texture is so weird. Pasta. Ooh, almost. But I do believe most pastas are made with eggs, so try again. Chips and guacamole. Peanut butter and jelly sandwich. It's already, like, 50% of my diet now. <laughs> Impossible meat? Or is that not allowed? I would imagine that's allowed. I mean, it is vegan friendly. Coconut curry. Ooh, that sounds so good. Oh, God, I'm so hungry. I love gigantic salads. Oh, so you opt for the super salad. I'm from New Mexico. I can live off beans, rice, and either red or green chili. What would the person who named walkie-talkies have named other items? Pretty sure they did. Flip-flops. Pooper scooper. Poopity scoop. Whoopity scoop. The whoop whoop stabby grabby instead of fork. Okay, but I'd love to. I'm gonna start calling them that now. Pretty sure they were responsible for tidy whities. Morning after pill. Oopsie daisies. Willy pilly. That's Viagra. I thought that's the stiffy lifty. I feel that this question is best answered by an Australian. I see you've played knifey spoony before. That sounds terrifying. Anything Australian is terrifying. Oh, it's a good thing they don't exist. Am I right? <laughs> Pushy sucky for a vacuum cleaner. Uh, that's what they called me back in the frat. <laughs> Condoms? Maybe, baby. Diarrhea. Soupy poopies. <laughs> I'm a child. What is the worst thing that a person can put on their bio on a dating app? If you can't handle me at my worst, you don't deserve me at my best. 100% drama free. I want somebody to spoil me. Next. <laughs> Alpha male. Oh, instant red flag. Thank you for putting that at the front. Don't waste my time. When I see that. Okay. Swipes left. Yeah, I don't know what people expect when they're so rude in their bio. Like, off the jump, why would I ever want to talk to you? A list of requirements. I'm not applying for a job. I'm trying to see if we'd have a good relationship. Based on your bio, you're not looking for a compatible person. You're looking for someone who gives you what you need, and you don't seem to realize that's only half of a relationship. I hate when people leave the bio blank. It just gives me no indication of what type of person they are and if we'll click. Whatever you want to know, ask with a blank bio. If you have zero self-awareness and no insight into yourself, that's very unattractive. I'm an open book. No, no, you're not. Books have words. I guess I can give a little slack on that because of the character counts of the bios. You can't put everything you want to say. I don't use this app, but you can find me on IG as at blah, blah, blah. Oh, I love that when they also have their like WhatsApp or Snapchat in their bio because they don't want to use Tinder or whatever other apps. No face pic until I know you don't know my husband slash wife. The no face pictures need to go away. It's 2022, almost 23. Grow up. Which movie is better than the book? Forrest Gump. He is not nearly as likable
remarkable in the book as Tom Hanks portrayed in the film. Gotta go, no country for old men. I didn't know it was based on a book. The Devil Wears Prada. Miranda is so much more of a respectable and well-rounded character in the movie than in the book, which makes her much more effective as an antagonist. It also makes Andy's character development more satisfying. Book Andy and Book Miranda were just so one-dimensional that they were annoying to read for me. Also, I haven't read it, but I did hear that the book version of Jojo Rabbit was pretty bad. How to Train Your Dragon. That was also based on a book? I am learning a lot today. The Green Mile. That might have been the best cast movie I've ever seen. Michael Jeter is Edward Delacroix to me. Tom Hanks, Michael Clark Duncan, and the guy who played Percy are perfect too. The Exorcist. The book was great, but the movie? Wow. The Princess Bride. Fight Club. Am I being pranked? How many movies are based off books? Jaws. In the novel, every single character was an a-hole. What is your most useless skill you possess? I can very accurately select the smallest container required to hold the leftovers, no matter how much or how little there is. I'm extremely useful for about five seconds after dinner, and that's it. I have an uncanny ability to repulse women with my physical appearance. This will only be appreciated by people who work in restaurants or food service, but if I need to grab a stack of something to be filled, I can grab the exact amount, plus or minus one. You tell me I need to grab 32 souffle cups to restock the ranch dressings? I can intrinsically know how to grab exactly 32 cups and maybe plus or minus a few lids. Once you tell me your birthday, I usually always know it. If I don't put it in my calendar, I will not remember. I can tell the difference between butter and I can't believe it's not butter. Well, I can't believe that you can do that. As a Scotsman, I can name all US presidents in order with matching number. I know all the elements. <laughs> oh yeah? Name them. Oh, thought so. Yeah, see? Quiet. Silence. I can accurately guess the time within 10 minutes, even if I just woke up. Tying a cherry stem with my tongue. Classic party trick. Ah, oh, you beat me to it. I usually perform it with those long shoelace sweets instead. I can do that too, but with my hands, I can make the air stink. Oh, I just did too. Oh, oh no. Oh, why did I do that? What's something you just don't understand? A lot of things. People who worship politicians. Politicians are not there to be worshipped. They are there to be criticized. How I could just kill a man. Okay, buddy. Chill out. Racism. Maybe it's my autism, but I genuinely don't understand why someone would discriminate against someone else for something they can't control. That's like discriminating someone for their height. Women. <laughs> you and me both, buddy. <laughs> High five. The fashion industry and why people fall for it. That's why I stay going to Goodwill and finding not so great clothes occasionally. How humans invented languages. That is something fun to ponder, like how exactly we all created our own separate languages even though we're all the same species is weird. Seinfeld. What's the deal with crypto miners? They're not digging up coffins. Ah ha ha ha. Parents. Ooh, and unfortunately you never will. Math. I think it's fake and everyone is lying. Oh, you're right. You're correct, actually. Look, there's a camera right over there. We got you. Do you consider yourself as intelligent? Why? I consider myself intelligent enough to know I don't know everything. I believe I am on the high side of average. I was praised throughout my life as being intelligent, but I found that I am not capable of understanding complex math, nor have I ever understood complex economics, chemistry, physics, computer sciences, or other such subjects. I have an aptitude towards literature and the arts, yet haven't showed any special talent. All in all, I have met and seen people far smarter than I am. Not academically speaking, but I am perceptive. I always know when someone is uncomfortable at a party. I believe that I have roughly the same intelligence as a squirrel with severe head trauma that is attempting to bury a ball bearing. No, because I'm on this website. I have spent most of the day firing low energy laser beams at my forehead and I think it has increased my intelligence to unfathomable levels. I'm no scientist so I can't disprove that that's working. Not especially. I'm not stupid, but I'm nothing special upstairs either. More of an artist than a scholar. I'm intelligent enough to be patient with those who are not. Is being dumb as f considered intelligent? Uh, not quite. What is a complete waste of money? Buying a new phone every year. My rate is one phone every four years. I don't like changing phone and I exploit them until I really see it not worth using it anymore. <laughs> Pay for premium avatar. They're either talking about VR chat or second life. 
life. Either way, don't do it. Edible gold. Oh my god, gold leaf crap on like chicken wings? Why? There's no point. It tastes bad too. When cashiers from major stores ask if you want to buy insurance on a product you just purchased for $3.99. I had a kid at GameStop push that shit hard on me once. It was a $60 game and he acted like if something happened, my life would be over. Kid, I'm a grown ass man with a job. If having to repurchase this video game is financially ruinous to me, I'll come in here and blow my brains out. It's $60. I'll absorb the risk. Buying those get rich like me courses everyone seems to be selling online. Like they get their money by selling it to people like you. Reddit gold. Do people pay for that? I don't use Reddit. <laughs> Throwing your money in the bin. Yeah, I would say that's a pretty big waste of money. Vapes. I've probably spent around $5,000 on disposable vapes in the past year. Probably more. And all it has done is put a hole in my bank account and damaged my lungs. NFTs. Still can't believe that was real. I still can't believe they're still kind of real because people still do them. All that garbage you bought from Amazon. Get it together, Patrick. You're not my mom. Twist. Yes, I am. Don't read my post history. Lavish weddings. I get it if you want to go all out, but remember, it is just a party you're throwing for your friends. Successfully took the trash out on time this week. What questions do you want answered by someone this accomplished? Are you worried at all? Now you have peaked so early in life? I did give myself some pretty big shoes to fill. Do you plan on writing a book on being successful and the ability to rise to the top of your game? I'm beginning to think it's something the world needs to hear. Any suggestions for a title? Simple steps, big man. Taking out the trash. A reflection on no longer being trash. Are you depressed? Not that I know of, but my family may think differently. How do you peel your potatoes? I eat the skins like a savage. How can I learn to be so motivated? There's something to be said for the hard way. How do I stop the voices? The key is to stop listening to them. Do you unlock an achievement for completing this near impossible side quest that you can only do on a certain day? Not that I know of, but it's an excellent idea that I think my city councilman is going to hear about it. To what do you owe your success? I'd be lying if I didn't acknowledge fruit fly season for being upon me, but the salmon I made dinner for dinner this week was a big help. Should I eat 500 calorie breakfast and skip lunch or eat salad for breakfast and lunch? By the way, I get hungry fast. A salad for breakfast could too easily be the start of a villain's story. I'd vote 500 calories for a little self-love in the morning. Thank you, Anonymous, for all of your wisdom. What are the most disturbing events that happened during the pandemic that no one talks about? Child abuse. When schools were closed. I can't even begin to imagine how bad it must have been. Working in the death care industry was an absolute nightmare, and no one spoke once about the amount of work funeral directors, embalmers, crematory operators, and medical examiners had to do. I think about mortality in a completely different way now. All the pets being purchased so people didn't feel lonely, only to be dumped and discarded like trash when they could go out again. Gotta love when people just treat animals like a trendy thing to get until they're bored with it. Most of the senators sold massive stocks before shutting down the country. Since then, there has been rampant fraud in the financial markets and unfathomable wealth being stolen from the people. Online schools meant abused children lost their one safe haven. A co-worker having a giant though standing at attention on their nightstand in the background. Yes, I'm pointing the finger at you, Ralph. Put that thing away before logging on. Nah, I think that was a power move. That was intentional. Australian wildfires was right before the pandemic hit here. Never heard what happened after that. Oh yeah, you're right. And I need to follow up on that. How unprepared our government agencies and people in general actually are to handle a crisis situation. And this is after we all had our zombie phase of, yeah, I'd totally live in an apocalypse. It's like, yeah, except you couldn't help yourself from going to the store and standing two inches away from the people in front of you because, oh, I don't wanna. Suddenly accommodations was found for the homeless, but as soon as lockdowns ended, get lost with that <laughs> Men of Reddit, what is the most unattractive fashion choice women frequently make? Oh, I'm so excited for men to talk about this. Shoes that are slightly too small so their toes hang off and they look like gnarly bird talons desperately gripping a branch. I hate when they wear flannel and jeans and just stand out in a cornfield perpetually T-posing. Oh, no, that is a scarecrow. I got, <laughs> I mixed it up again. Impractical shoes, too much eyebrow work, covering themselves in goat blood. People always say they want a big 
happy goth girlfriend, but suddenly, when it comes time to light the sacrificial flames and f*** her down in a pool of goat's blood while onlookers chant for the glory of Baphomet, they start complaining. I'm ready, coach. Put me in. Those giant, sharpied on eyebrows at strange angles. I told my girlfriend I didn't like that. She looked surprised. Those tarantula eyelashes. I will say, big eyelashes do kind of scare me. Wearing strappy heels that are too small and leave their toes hanging over the edge. And lip fillers. Fellas, why, as a man, are you staring at a woman's toes? As a teen in Ireland, teen girls putting on fake tan. It always looks like hideous and makes them look like an Oompa Loompa. Fake tans make you look like a clown. All the girls in my high school got fake tans for prom and would have looked thousands of times better without them. I personally don't like that trend where they put lipstick around their lips to make them look bigger. They don't look bigger. It makes you look like a child who stole their mother's makeup. Swollen injected lips. Those fluffy slider things. What was the fluffy what? What are you talking about? Me and my acrylic nails are shaking right now. Nude color yoga pants. You would think this would be a winner, but it's not. If America had a loading screen, what tips would there be? Switching to your pistol is faster than reloading the gun. Stay strapped or get capped. George Washington or something. Never share your political opinions unless asked, or you'll look crazy and nobody will want to talk to you. Have you tried pulling yourself up by your bootstraps? By not being poor? You will succeed easily through different levels. Golly gee, why didn't I think of that? Eat food to survive, but be careful. 99% of American food will cause health issues later in the story. Please move over to the right lane if not passing. Not applicable if in Michigan. Getting ill or injured in America can have drastic effects on your finances and ability to feed yourself. Consider other lands until you are highly skilled. Have a gun because everyone else might have one. Having a pet will increase your happiness attribute by 25%. Beware of exotic pets unless you belong to the Florida man class. The law is only applied when they find you. Good luck. You're gonna need it. Ooh, actually, it's uh, apostrophe R-E. <laughs> Sorry, you messed that one up. Thank you for entering the asylum. Please be kind to the politicians. They are a tender ruling class. Exit near the IRS desk. There wouldn't be any tips, just ads. Oh God, I haven't heard something more true in a while. Now that the expression Netflix and chill is seven years old, how should we update it? Oh my God, it's seven years. <laughs> I think I just felt myself get older. Why is it that all the alternative terms are either rhyming, alliterative, or both when Netflix and chill is neither? Really interesting. Stream and cream. Uh, that one's coming on a little too strong, if you get what I mean. Netflix and ads. I like to imagine you just invite someone over to watch Netflix while you're just standing there showing them ads for different products. Apple TV Plus and I don't think I'm in love with you anymore. Move on to IMAX and Climax. Replace IMAX with HBO. Max, HBO and Blow, Hulu and Uwu, Hulu and Snoo Snoo, Amazon Prime and 69, Amazon Prime and Quality Time, Reddit and Bed It. That sounds like an awful way to hang out with someone. Hey, want to come over and watch me read Reddit? Uh, well, I guess that's what I would tell people. Oops. Netflix and oh God, my back is killing me. What have you finally accepted? There is no point in arguing with random people on the internet. It's a waste of time and energy. That two people can see the same thing and experience completely different feelings. I gotta go get it if I want it. I guess that's good advice to accept. Like, you can't just wait around for something forever. Treating people fairly doesn't mean you will get treated fairly back. Doesn't mean you shouldn't, but never expect it back. Being mad never solved any of my problems, but sure caused me a few. Hmm, but alternately, suppressing my anger was not a good idea either. If you're angry, it might be for a reason and you should explore it. I'm sorry, but are you guys twins? Impossible. One has wavy hair and the other has curly hair. That I don't have to justify my decisions to people. If it makes me happy and has a purpose for my life, that's good enough for me. Balding. Just embrace the George Costanza within and it'll work out. Not everyone is my friend. That one's a rough one to come to terms with, but it is, uh, it's healthy. Most people are stupid and there's no way to change that. Work is what you do for money. Time is what you spend. 
spend. I am genuinely nowhere as smart as I thought I was. You and me both, sister. Whew. Software terms and conditions. I'm proud of you. You finally, you finally did it. That I need aluminum in my deodorant. You might have accepted that before and then forgot. What does aluminum in deodorant do? Uh, this is the first time hearing of it. What do you like spending money on? I don't like spending money, but I do like getting things. Food and traveling. Oh, I would love to start traveling again, but the pandy is still kind of hanging around. Food. All my money goes on food. My shoes have holes in them, but no, no. That's a waste of money. But these noodles? They will bring me happiness. Books. Oh, I see we've got a scholar in our midst. Things I don't need. Yeah, I'd say that's about 90% of my purchases. Things I don't need. With money I don't have. That's what a credit card's for. <laughs> I'm kidding. Don't don't use a credit card on, on stupid things, please. Women of Reddit, what is the most unattractive fashion choice men frequently make? Sunglasses on the back of your neck. WTF? Yeah, what are you guys doing with that? Like, are, do you have a second pair of eyes back there and you're just trying to hide them? Too much camouflage. Hats, shirts, pants, jackets. What's the point of dressing that way? I can't even see you. Political or supposedly funny quote t-shirts. As in, federal b inspector. I am not as think as you drunk I am. <laughs> Fashion starts with good grooming habits. If a dude has long or dirty nails, a crusty beard, greasy hair, B.O., etc., then it doesn't matter what they're wearing. Get away from me and go take a shower. Long or dirty nails? Biggest hygiene peeve is seeing dirty long nails. As a dude, I learned very early that hand hygiene is as important as other hygiene. Yeah, please trim your nails every so often because having talons is not the look. I'm a guy and I know a conversation about my love of cargo shorts is incoming. Wrap around Oakleys. Filthy baseball hats. Camouflage. Wrap around Oakleys, I imagine, are the same as skin tight Oakleys and God, just let them die, please. There are so many. But broccoli hair is the thing I hate the most right now. My first ex-husband once wanted to go shopping to look for a nice pair of white dress jeans. Direct quote. I've had a visceral reaction to white jeans ever since. What a beautiful contradiction in terms. I need to pick up some dress crocs. The hen shirts and hoodies is frankly creepy and unattractive. If you still wear those Ahiago shirts outside of high school, mm, jail. You're going to jail. Well, I've got to go throw out the entirety of my wardrobe, so I will see you guys next time. Thank you so much for watching. Once again, my name has been Brandon, and I will see you some other day. Bye-bye!